Hey, what's up everybody? True Boxing here. Thank you for coming back to get hit with the truth. So today we are doing the Canelo sweepstakes where I will be discussing the um, the Canelo fight, uh, his next fight, you know, and who's kind of in line to, to compete with him. Now before we get into that, if you can smash the like button, leave a comment, or subscribe to the channel, I really do appreciate any and all support that I can get as I continue to build my channel here. So, um, this you know, the next fight uh, should be coming up in September. Um, but right now, we don't know for sure. Because there's, as I see it, there's about four candidates on the table um, that I think are the realistic options for Canelo in his next fight. Um, we're going to discuss those one by one. Um, I'm going to start with David Benavidez, the guy that everybody wants to see him fight. Um, you know, Canelo came out and said it's 200 million that's what he wants for that fight um as of right now if we're talking about the regular networks like the zone pbc um i don't think i don't think that's going to happen i don't think they'll shell out 200 to canelo to fight david benavidez people are arguing arguing you know going back and forth the benavidez and canelo fans about the weight stuff that Canelo is referring to. And again, I agree with Canelo because, um, you know, I, I agree with Canelo regarding the um, the weight. Uh, I just think he picked a bad time to start talking about the weight because people have wanted to see him and Benavidez for a while now. And now that Benavidez is, has absolutely earned the fight by defeating Caleb Plant and Demetrius Andre last year, now Canelo wants to make the weight an issue. Well, David's always technically been a weight bully, in quotes. He's never fought lower than 168. He's enormous for that weight. Um, is he breaking any laws, doing anything illegal? Absolutely not. You know, um, but, you know, considering Canelo started off as a welterweight at 147, you know, it doesn't, um, in terms of, you know, when you're looking at, at body size, frame size, also what you're used to, um, you know, and you start, and basically they started off 21 pounds away from each other. And I think that's really significant, you know, um, because, you know, when they come in on fight night, Benavides will be way bigger, you know, and if Canelo puts a weight clause on him, he'll hear shit for that. So I get it, you know, do I like it? No, I, you know, David legally makes 168 and there are no rehydration uh, rules. Canelo could put those rules on him. David already said he would take that um, and do it, you know, but I also agree that Canelo might not get anywhere by doing that. He might get a ton of shit from the public for doing that. Um, I don't know if he would or not. I think it kind of works both ways. I think you're going to have your crowd. If Canelo were to go beat David, if he puts a weight clause on him, I think you're going to have your crowd that says, um, that, that makes the excuse that's the only reason David lost. And then you're going to have that crowd that would say, well, you know, he, um, David, David's a weight bully, you know, and just because it's legal doesn't make it okay, you know, and, and people got to understand that, but, you know, um, I also, you know, people want to talk about the rules, you know, what about the governing bodies allowing Canelo to continue to fight for their world title? That's, that's a rule. People don't like it, right? Yeah, you don't like that Canelo's not being enforced by the WBC to face his mandatory in Benavidez or he loses his belt? No, you know why? Because Canelo's such a, an enormous name and Benavidez is not close to that level in terms of name recognition like, you know, like Canelo is. They're not going to force him to fight David Benavidez then. That's just, they're just not going to do it. You know what's funny though is back in the day they did force Canelo to fight Triple G. Why? Because Triple G had that name that David doesn't have. So, David's got to do more. That's it. He's got to do more. He wants to earn that fight. It sucks. I do believe there's an outside option if Turkey Alashik can 
get the money together for Canelo, but I think he more wants to go after the next option we're going to talk about, and that is Terrence Bud Crawford, the pound-for-pound, co-pound-for-pound king of boxing right now. Um, you know, we know Crawford's returning in August. Turkey al Sheik says he's working on trying to get Canelo and Crawford for December or January. Canelo has come out already and said that he doesn't think he's going to get any credit for beating Crawford. But, you know, Canelo needs to stop that already because where what credit did he get from defeating a fellow undisputed champion at Jamel Charlo? He didn't really get a ton of credit for that, which I believe is wrong. I gave him credit. I think that was a that was a big fight. He had an undisputed champ at 154 moving up two weight classes to fight an undisputed champ at 168, you know? Nobody had a problem when Sugar Shea Mosley moved up two weight classes and beat Oscar when Manny Pacquiao moved up two weight classes and beat Oscar, you know? But Canelo didn't get that similar kind of credit. As the bigger guy, he didn't get that similar credit. Uh, maybe because he didn't lose the fight, you know? Um, like Oscar did in both those instances. But, um... You know, I feel like he should—he deserved more credit for that. But Crawford's a bigger name than Charlo, and now that Crawford's making his debut at 154, it's really not going to be any difference in terms of the two jumping the two weight classes. Now, the big difference, though, is that Charlo started at 154. That's his—that's his natural weight. Crawford started way down at 135, and he's going to be 33 pounds over the um over his starting limit when he weighs in for Canelo so I feel Canelo he doesn't know if he wants to do that but then again Canelo also started at 147 you know so again I have to say like I don't think it's that big of a gap you know outside of what these guys have been used to doing to their bodies and who they've been fighting but Crawford being the pound for pound king that's such a big money fight, and so many people are going to tune in to watch it that I think Canelo shouldn't shy away from it, and he should definitely look at that fight because the other two options we're going to talk about just are not realistic, you know, that that he's going to get zero credit for the next two options. Um, and Crawford, I mean, even if, if Canelo knocks him out, it's going to be huge. It's still going to be a big deal. You know, and that's why I think Canelo should go for it, for sure. If he's not going to fight Benavidez, which, you know, he's made it clear what his what his bottom line is for that fight. Next option is Jermall Charlo, the undefeated former undisputed, or former middleweight champ and junior middleweight champ. Um, he was just recently stripped of his middleweight title. He had a DWI. Um, he got a lot of personal issues, but he's still an outside option for Canelo. I don't like it. Um, I don't like that he's an option. He hasn't done shit in years, and I really don't like that Canelo's keeping him as an option. I don't. I think it's uh, I think it's a joke, to be honest. Um, Crawford should not be... I mean, Charlo should not be in the discussion, but he is. And um, you got to be realistic that he is. You know, it sucks, but he is. With the recent DWI things, I don't think Canelo's going to end up fighting him next. But you never know. He might. This was a guy Canelo wanted to fight in May, and the PBC put their foot down and said, well, we're not paying you what you got for your previous fight. So, no. And he, um, you know, Canelo ended up breaking his contract, his three-fight contract with the PBC because of that, and fought um, Jaime Maguia on a one-fight deal excuse me, with the PBC and with um, and with the zone. So it's going to be inter interesting to see if Charlo is still an option, but I really don't think he is. And the final option in the Canelo sweepstakes right now, the undefeated super middleweight contender Edgar Berlanga from Puerto, you know, from Puerto Rican descent um, is the next option that is being, flo you know, being floated around. He is Canelo's WBA number one ranked contender, but I mean, let's be honest. This is a um, a bad choice for Canelo if he's seriously considering this uh, this fight. I I'm sorry, it's 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 bullshit. 
The one thing I can say about Jaime Manguilla is he was number three behind Canelo and David Benavides at 168. So, you know, yes, I wanted to see him fight Benavides, but I was looking forward to Manguilla because Manguilla earned it with the knockout of John Ryder. He earned that fight with Canelo and um, he earned the right to call himself the number three super middleweight in the world. Edgar Berlanga hasn't beaten anybody. He's barely in my top 10, you know, and it's just sad that Canelo is considering him. And I know what they said, oh, they're going to build in Mexico versus Puerto Rico. I don't give a shit about that because Berlanga hasn't done anything to where he's got this huge backing of Puerto Rican fans, you know, that's going to support, you know, this fight. And I'm sure there is a base there. But it's just not what any real boxing fan wants to see. And I'm highly disappointed that this is the front runner right now, according to a lot of rumors that we're hearing, you know? I mean, I wish it wasn't, but sadly it sounds like it is. And I'm just like, damn, that, that really sucks. So those are the four candidates for Canelo's next fight. Now, putting them in order from four to one, what do I think the more realistic ones are? Um, I'll be honest, number four, I think Charlo is number four. I didn't, really don't think the Canelo camp is going to consider him now. Um, now that this DWI and the personal issues, I really don't think Canelo gets any kind of credit for beating Charlo. I'm putting him number four in terms of what Canelo is actually going to do. Not what I want to see, what Canelo is actually going to do. Number three, I think, is Benavides. I do think Canelo is considering the fight, but I do think it's going to have to take place with Turkey Alashik bringing the money to the table and considering that's not the fight Turkey Alashik wants first for Canelo, I don't think um, it's the fight he's going he's gonna to get made. So I do think it's an option, but I don't think it's, it's a front option and I don't see it happening next. Number two, the number two option I'm, I'm saying is Terrence Bud Crawford um, in the pound for pound fight that Turkey Alashik does want to make. Um, I love the I love the matchup and I and I would love to see the fight, um, but I I'm leaning towards the less likely because Canelo just keeps saying that he doesn't um, that he doesn't want you know he doesn't think he'll get any credit for beating Crawford. But I'll tell you this: if Canelo lags and doesn't get his next opponent um, signed on for like by June for the September fight, I'm telling you that means he's gonna he's gonna be considering this Crawford deal, you know, and he might not fight in September. So um, I do think it's possible, and that's why it's number two. But what I think is what Canelo is considering to be his uh his next fight the most what i think the front runner is for him is the edgar berlanga fight and again guys i don't like it i don't like it i'm not a fan of that fight um i, I wish uh if i had to put it in order it, it would be benavidez one it would be crawford two um and you know charlo and berlanga wouldn't even be considered in my book but I, you know i think i see I think I like the Berlanga fight better than the Charlo fight, but not by much, you know, not by much. So um, it's going to be interesting to see what what happens um, and who Canelo is going to get in the ring with. And we just have to see what happens. Uh, in June, we'll tell a lot. We're going to hear a lot in May, but I think in June, that's when normally the fight, uh, if it's not finalized already by May, it's normally finalized in June because they need time to promote it. So if Canelo is quick to it and decides on Berlanga, then we're going to see. If not, and he and he goes in another direction, he might not make a choice uh, right there in, in June. So we'll see what happens. But that's it. That's what I got. That's my Canelo sweepstakes following his victory over Jaime Manguilla to retain the undisputed super middleweight championship of the world. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, smash the like button, leave a comment, or subscribe to the channel. I appreciate any and all support. This is True Boxing. You've been hit with the truth.